This video is an introduction to set theory. A set is just a collection of objects. For example, I'm going to write down four different types of fruit. Apple, banana, orange, and pear. If I want to refer to these four fruit as a collective, I can combine them into a set. I can do this by writing curly brackets on either side of the four names. Let's call the set set A. An object inside a set is called an element of that set. So apple is an element of set A. Or we can say apple is a member of set A. The Greek symbol epsilon is used to indicate is a member of. The size of set A is simply the number of elements it contains. So in this case, the size of A is 4. The set doesn't change if the order of the elements changes, or if any of the elements are repeated. So all these three sets are the same. That's about all we can say for one set, but things get a bit more interesting when we introduce a second set. Let's call it set B. So now we have two different sets, we can think about ways to combine them in order to create another set. We can take the elements from A and B and unite them into a single set. This is called the union of A and B, and it's denoted by a symbol that looks like U. Let's call this set U to indicate that it's the union. Notice that although apple and pear appear both in set A and B, they only appear once in the union. Even if I did happen to write them twice, we know that a set with repeated elements and a set without are the same. But now that we've noticed that apple and pear appear in both set A and B, we can use that to create yet another set. This is called the intersection because it contains the overlapping elements in sets A and B. The intersection of A and B contains every element that appears both in A and in B. We've just said that that's apple and pear. Let's call it set I. Notice that the intersection symbol is just the same as the union symbol flipped upside down. In a sense, the union symbol stands for or, as in every element either in A or B, and the intersection symbol stands for and, as in every element in both A and B. I'd like to look at the set I in a bit more detail. We know that I contains the elements that appear in A and in B, so we know that every element in I is also in B. This means that i is a subset of b. However, since every element in b is in b, we can also say that b is a subset of itself. There is a better way to describe the relationship between i and b. We say that i is a strict subset of b if every element in i is contained in b, but also that the size of i is smaller than the size of b. That's true, so i is a strict subset of b. We know that i is a strict subset of b, that means that although every element in I is inside the set B, there are some elements in B that aren't in I. This new set is called B without I, and it's simply every element in B that isn't in I. This set could also be called the complement of I in B. The complement is denoted by a little superscript C, but it doesn't make any reference to the set B. This is something you have to keep in mind with the complement, that it always refers to a larger set outside the set you're taking the complement of. What if we take the intersection between i and its complement? By definition, the complement of i is everything not in i, so there are no elements in the intersection. This is a special set called the empty set. Let's have a look at a few more special sets besides the empty set. We have the integers, which is every whole number, including the negative ones and zero. We can write down this set using an ellipsis. So the ellipsis indicates that the numbers continue on forever to the left and to the right. This is the first infinite set we've encountered, meaning that the number of elements inside the set is infinite. Writing down the size of this kind of a set is more tricky than it is for the finite sets we've been dealing with so far. Another important set is the set of rational numbers, which is just every number that can be written as a fraction. But now we have another difficulty. Whereas with the integers we could write the numbers down in order, minus 2, minus 1, 0, and so on. There's no way to do this for the rational numbers, so we represent the elements of Q in a symbolic way. We say that the set of rational numbers contains numbers of the form P over Q, such that, indicated by the colon, such that P is a member of the integers, and Q is a member of the integers without zero. This is to avoid dividing by zero. And finally we have one of the most familiar special sets, the set of real numbers. This is the set of rational numbers, as well as the irrational numbers. So it includes things like pi and e, as well as every number that can be represented as a fraction. Okay, so now we've met most of the notation we need, and we have a decent understanding of the basic concepts of set theory. 
Let's see how we would go about proving a theorem. This theorem actually consists of two statements, which are together called De Morgan's laws. The first is that A union B complement is equal to A complement intersection B complement. And the second is that A intersection B complement is equal to A complement union B complement. Notice the similarities between both statements. In order to bring the complement inside the brackets and onto the sets A and B, we have to flip the union or intersection sign. When proving a theorem, it's a good idea to first try and convince yourself that it's true. A good way to do this in set theory is to use a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram will just give us a graphical representation on what's on the left and the right hand side of these equalities. Let's look at the first statement for now. First we draw a box, and inside the box two circles. One of the circles represents the set A, another one represents the set B. The overlap of the two circles represents the intersection between A and B. The box outside represents the set with respect to which the complement is taken. Remember the complement needs to refer to a larger set. In this case, we'll just call it set S. Now A union B complement is everything that's not in the union of A and B. So that's the area inside S, but outside the two circles representing A and B. That's the red shaded area. OK, so that's what the left hand side of the equality looks like. And what about the right hand side? Well, A complement is just everything that's not in A. B complement is everything that's not in B. And the intersection of A complement and B complement means those elements that are in A complement and in B complement. In other words, the area that is shaded red in both the left and the right diagram. As you can see, this red shaded area is exactly the same as the red shaded area we have for A union B complement. So that's pretty convincing. But it doesn't constitute a proof. So how are we going to prove De Morgan's laws? Remember how I said that B is a subset of itself. So if the two sets in the first statement really do equal each other, then they're both going to be subsets of each other. That is, A complement intersection B complement is a subset of A union B complement, and A union B complement is a subset of A complement intersection B complement. We're going to solve the second of these two statements. Let's pick an arbitrary element in A union B complement, denoted by x. Since x is in A union B complement, that means it's neither in A nor in B. So x is not a member of A and x is not a member of B. Therefore, x is a member of A complement and x is a member of B complement. So x is a member of A complement intersection B complement. Because x represents any element in A union B complement, that means that every element in A union B complement is inside A complement intersection B complement. So A union B complement is a subset of A complement intersection B complement. So we've proved the second of the bottom two statements, and now we need to prove the first of them. Then we'll have proved the first of De Morgan's laws. And then we have to do the same thing for the second one. But I'll leave that for you. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments below.